folks in the city looking out here and seeing that flag fly over this board every day really rub them the wrong way, okay? Because it was believed to be an unwanted foreign occupation of this island here in Charleston Harbor. And the main reason that it, this situation here stalemated in early 1861 is Abraham Lincoln is not the President of the United States. He's the President-elect. The old inauguration day back then was March 4th. Lincoln's not going to enter office until March. So you're finishing out the term of Lincoln's predecessor, James Buchanan. And Mr. Buchanan will never be remembered in history as a man with a lot of get up and go or the ability to uh, eagerly uh, make hard decisions. Okay? He's so overwhelmed by what's going on. States are leaving the Union. You know, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? He kind of like an ostrich sticking his head in the sand after a while. And he's relying on advice from his cabinet. They're mostly all Southerners. So you see how it's going to stalemate. And when Abraham Lincoln comes into office, he wants to do something um, definitive about Fort Sumter. Major Anderson's men have been kind of left to hang out to dry under Buchanan. Um, but remember, Abraham Lincoln is a unionist, believes in a cohesive country, not a loosely knit collection of sovereign states. Okay? So he will never recognize the Confederate, the Confederate States of America in a legal sense. When Abraham Lincoln looked at the South, he saw part of the United States in a state of rebellion against the national government. Remember, the Confederacy was 11 states at its height. He never saw 11 stars come off the U.S. flag at any time. Because Lincoln believes that the South is still part of the United States, but it's rebelling. Okay? So this is still a U.S. Army post. As Commander-in-Chief, he had the right to reinforce it. Now, as a South Carolinian or a good Confederate, you have not liked having 85 Yankee soldiers in this harbor for all those months. And then imagine how the folks are going to react when they find out that ships bearing 200 more soldiers are about to arrive at Fort Sumter. So, folks, the firing on Fort Sumter at that ungodly hour on the morning of April 12, 1861, is to prevent the imminent reinforcement and resupply of Fort Sumter. Of course, once the fighting started, and it got the way be two-way fighting after 7 a.m., the ships could not get into the harbor to fulfill their mission. The garrison here put up a good fight for two days, but once you're, you know, you're not going to get any help, it's a fight you cannot continue indefinitely. So the fighting stopped on the afternoon of the 13th. The Union men departed on the 14th. Really remarkable how they got out here. The Union ships bearing the reinforcements, once they could not get into the harbor, remained offshore just out of range, kind of waiting to see what would happen. So arrangement was worked out that the Union men would give up the fort. They will be ferried out. The schooner came out from town on the 14th to pick them up and take them out to those Union ships waiting offshore. So the ships sent down here to help them actually ended up carrying them out of here and the Confederate flag flies over Fort Sumter. So folks, that is, we gotta let you go. I wanna thank you all for coming out today. Have a good afternoon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.